No summer relaxation for Poet Technologies. Chairman and CEO Suresh Venkatesan is here to provide an update on many of the happenings as the company continues to gain recognition for its products and its proprietary optical interposer platform. Suresh, you've had a bit of a whirlwind few weeks. What are some of the high level points of interest that have emerged? Uh, you know, I know, I believe the PIC conference was probably one of them. Yeah, you know, we've, we've uh, you know, we continue to make steady progress on, on, on our product roadmap. So, uh, you know, I think we had a couple of press announcements out uh, over the past few weeks talking about, you know, our, our uh, completion of our DVT or design verification test on the 200 gig products and, and us sampling them now to customers uh, across the full temperature range. Um, there was another demo we had done at the OFC, which was, you know, the 400 gig, 800 receivers. So we've kind of progressed that through the beta as well as uh, initiation of customer samples and qualification. And we expect that product to, um, to be in, um, you know, production uh, in fourth quarter um, earlier than we had originally thought. So that's going well. Um, we uh, also have done a couple of designs uh, with integrated drivers and integrated tiers for both 200 and 400, um, the transmit and receive. So it's our first you know, product implementation of co-packaging of electronics and photonics, which we know the Interposer has the capability to do, but it's the first time that we're actually going to put it together in a real product application. And so we've got those products uh, coming down the pike, um, you know, sampling customers in, in the fourth quarter of this year. So um, a lot of work on the product side. The PIC conference was great. It, you know, it gives us, I think it was the first um, major you know, peer referenced conference outside of VLSI that I did earlier, um, where, you know, much of the audience are optics folks. And, um, you know, our platform was, you know, highly recognized. Um, you know, mostly, you know, people talk about integration, people talk about hybrid integration. There was definitely a lot of talk about hybrid and heterogeneous integration in that conference, because it's really, I believe, where the the world is and the system integration is going to go over the next five years. Of course, we've been talking about hybrid integration since what 2017 or 18, but that you know that that concept's catching on, um, and and I think there was a recognition that you know we took a little bit more of a holistic approach to under, addressing all of the potential challenges from optical to electrical to mechanical to thermal. Uh, which a lot of folks talk about, you know, integration or hybrid integration, but without really any reference to a lot of the practical real world challenges with the integration that ultimately results in a product that, you know, works across the temperature range and works across the, the frequency range that, uh, that it needs to work at. So that was uh, well accepted, well understood, well acknowledged at the conference. Um, you know, this conference was... Uh, I mean, you know, I, I was taken aback and, and maybe I shouldn't have been, but, you know, I hadn't been out to the big conference for a while, but there's a lot of innovation in Europe and a lot of component level innovation in Europe. And, and these components require an integration platform to ultimately make it into a system in an integrated form factor. And so there was a lot of interest. A lot of people came to our booth. Um, you know, uh, folks in either defense or in LIDAR or what, what have you, where, you know, they see an opportunity for an integration platform such as ours to make their systems more viable. And, and so, um, you know, while it's not our immediate thrust to go to run after every opportunity um, that affords itself, because we have to be very selective about what we do and we have a roadmap we need to execute to, uh, it is good to get these peripheral interests um, to engage in discussions, engage in dialogues, and to the extent that um, these applications fit within the work that we're already doing for our roadmap, you know, um, that is something that we can um, um, take a look at. So from that perspective, uh, the conference was very good. You know, I think people understand what we're doing. We're kind of um, coming out slowly. I mean, I think one is, you know, one is putting products in the hands of customers. The other is getting a broad appreciation of what POET does within the community. Um, and that community outreach uh, is really critical with these conferences. Um, I think the next one that, you know, I've been invited to speak at is ECOC, uh, which is in Basel in Switzerland um, later in September. Um, and so we expect to have 
you know, additional progress on some of our products uh, to be able to present our approach. And, and then particularly the scalability of our approach as it result as it applies to kind of eight channel, 16 channel integration. Um, you know, when people talk about 800 gig modules or 1.6 terabit per second modules, uh, where we really, our technology shines, right? And uh, so I think we're looking at these really high end products and modules uh, where, you know, we clearly have that differentiation um, and then still using the 100, 200, um, you know, products with our committed customers to uh, proliferate, gain market acceptance and, and gain the visibility that we as a company would need. Right. And, and I think you mentioned hybrid integration it was very noticeable in, in the pick summation uh, that, that's online of the, of the conference, how the industry seems to be moving towards what uh, you have been working on with your team for uh, years, as you said. And then you also were at the VLSI conference, as you mentioned, and the Shine Center opened all of that related to hybrid integration. So you know, maybe, maybe uh, talk a little bit about uh, the conference and the Shine Center opening, the VLSI conference and the Shine Center opening. Uh, did, it, did those as well open eyes uh, to what Poet is doing? Yeah, the VLSI conference is different. It's, it's a very CMOS electronic centric conference. Um, so to be accepted into that conference with our paper on the Interposer was, um, was actually very nice because, um, you know, the, 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 the concept of the Interposer is gaining an importance and relevance. I mean, even companies like Qualcomm presented at the VLSI conference, their transition from system on chip to system on multi-chip. And when you go from a single chip to multi-chip, you know, there are two critical principles that become critically important. One is, you know, you need a low cost, highly efficient packaging platform that enables these multiple chips to communicate with each other. And secondly, it brings up the concept of hybrid integration, even in the electronics world, where each of these chips can be optimized with their unique technology that you know maximizes their benefit, and so um, it was great to see you know our approach um, essentially does that, which is a low cost packaging platform enabling optics integration, but at the same time the whole concept of best of breed, known good die hybrid integration, uh, you know material agnostic platform. Um, that that has legs, right? It has something that we're doing today with flip chip bonding downstream. You know, we can see the interposer expanding to incorporating novel materials such as lithium niobate, et cetera, and it that you know extends the roadmap to you know multiple applications. And and I think the concept of the sandwiched interposer that 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 we've got, you know, applies very very effectively in these uh, in these future applications as well. You know, people talk about interposers for thermal, interposers for RF, you know, so I think from that perspective, we've got an interposer that addresses RF thermal as well as the optical connectivity. Um, and so that was, um, you know, uh, recognized as, as a significant progress uh, from from a capability perspective, right? And we and I know you've been excited about the directly directly modulated lasers, the DMLs uh, that are in in the post devices. Um, similar excitement uh, for that uh, from from the Absolutely. folks you're talking. Absolutely, you know, I think DML lasers are still the mainstay and workhorse of this industry, and to the extent that they continue on a roadmap to increased frequency, you know, the fact that we have a platform that can incorporate these DML lasers in a form factor that's untouchable at power consumption levels that's untouchable is is really key. We are in the third quarter now. It's a, a, a we've stated that it's a, an important one for the for the company. Uh, Superphotonics, uh, the joint venture in in China, getting ready to ramp up some production there, um, you know, without being too specific for, for the, uh, with the poet's uh, loyal investor base, uh, what, what, what's coming down the pipe that uh, we can look forward to? Well, I mean, I think there's, um, I, I think our, you know, there are two key inflection points for us uh, this year um, that, that really helps uh, poet as well as super photonics, um, you know, ramp its revenue. Um, one key inflection point is the transmit on 400 gig. Um, you know, that's been a challenge for us because, you know, the, the supply of modulators has been substantially delayed, uh, but we now have access to the silicon photonics modulators and we're working to incorporate them into engines. 
and we're working, you know, really hard to try to, you know, get some demonstrations done for the CIOE, uh, which is in September in China. Um, but at the same time, you know, that's one key inflection point, and we're taking a parallel path there with the DML lasers, as you know, I've mentioned before, and this advancement on the interposer to be able to utilize alternate lasers supply uh, makes that path, you know, feasible and attractive as well. Um, so that's one key inflection that we're working on, which is the 400 gig transmit. The receive is already there in the bag. So once we get that transmit at 400 gig, our roadmap all the way to 1.6 terabit is secured because our form factor is such that a 400 gig solution becomes a 2 by 400 for 800 and a 4 by 400 for 1.6 tera. And both of those are standards. Um, as the data center you know, clicks up in frequency at this point, it's basically multiple channels of 400. And that's that's where we're going is four channels, eight channels, 16 channels. And as that channel count increases, you know, our value increases and that that is critical to, to the company's success. The second is, you know, is, is our, our remote light source business that, you know, we've got this business with Celestial and our intent is to be able to d- deliver samples to them this year and then leverage that um, to to target ad- alternate customers in, in that space, right? And so those are the two key things, um, you know, apart from the standard qualifications and sampling and the 100, 200 and the things that we're doing, you know, those are the two key things that are important for POET going forward. So uh, pre- pre-qualification, when you go from 400 to 800 to 1.6, th- that, that time is cut because the, the, the... Yeah, because the engine, the base block that is 400 would, would, would be qualified. And so at that point, you're just using multiples of a qualified engine. So then the module qualification time gets cut as a consequence. And so we're kind of looking forward to that. So we think that really that 400 transmit is 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 critical. And, and we've got two paths there that we're working on in the second half of this year. Um, but either of those paths kind of unlock our roadmap for us. Right. And, and you know, where, where are we at with the samples that have gone out, um, I guess, in June? Uh, we're, we're waiting for customer feedback on those, which... Yeah, okay. I mean, they're, they're now, you know, we're at the, at the point where with, with, the, with the two committed customers, they're doing designs on modules. So, you know, I think at this point, they've got tens of samples or, you know, or a lot of them that they're using to, you know, finalize their own module design. So that that part at this point is basically turned over to super photonics and they're you know they're 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 managing that and 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 driving that forward um on the 200 gig there's a fair bit of interest and so we've been um you know we we demonstrated um you know at the ofc a quarter later we're sampling you know multiple customers on that front so there you know because it's a new module and a new design uh, it's going to take a bit uh, of time, but you know, one of them, one of our customers there is already starting to design in the 200 gig, so that's also pretty exciting. Uh, 400 and 800, um, you know, we've got again many many customers in the pipeline, particularly for the 800 segment, and and like I might have mentioned before, you know, we expect to in fact demonstrate a 1.6 terabit receiver you know, uh, at the CIOE. So it just kind of goes to show that once you have that base 400 building block, our roadmap is very secure through 1.6 terabits. And so our focus really now is to get that base 400 transmit done because at that point, you know, that, 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 that roadmap becomes extremely clear and, and, and we can, I mean, we can plot that trajectory with customers and they can see it, right? And and it becomes very important for us. So we see that as a very key inflection point for the back half of this year. Well, uh, Suresh, it's great to hear of more clarity and more building blocks and that there's continued adoption and, and interest in, in what you're doing. So thanks so much for taking the time. For those watching, my name is Adrian bridge I'm a content creator for Poet and an investor in the company. Uh, thanks for joining us. We'll be catching up with Suresh and others in the team uh, down the road soon.